staying long, are you? Not if I can help it. Because, quite frankly, the sooner you're out of here, the better. Oh, Eureka! Something we agree on. Hello. I'm telling you, one of us is going to wind up dead round here at this rate. Hello. Is that a threat, my dear? Hello. 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 Can you two please try and stop arguing? Tell him that. Tell her that. You're impossible. You are making my daughter unhappy. Mum, there's something I've really... Now got... isn't the time. Did you hear what she said? You're impossible. She meant both of us. Duff butt. Here we are. Thank you. <laughs> Shop bought. It's always a pleasure to see you, Edna. But is there any particular reason for your visit? Oh, I won't keep you. I expect you're busy packing your bags and so forth. Oh, we haven't got that far yet. It's more a matter of what to leave and what to take. Oh. Lenin? Oh, no. Then I'll get straight to the point. It's clear to me that you have been having second thoughts about leaving. I think you're mistaken, Edna. Oh, please, don't prevaricate with me. Are you or are you not having doubts about leaving? Yes, I am. Perhaps I should pour. That man is going to drive me mad. Can we just drop it a minute, Mum? Drop it? I'm sorry. Am I boring you? No, it's just... Oh, silly I'm... me. You're only talking about my marriage, my former love of my life, my future happiness. Oh, I know you wouldn't be interested. Oh, Mum, please. What? Never mind. Goodbye, Donna. You see? It freezes me out. Now, there's only one word for that. Childish. Childish and petty. Two words, Viv. Thank you. You have friends here, Pearl. I know. And if we leave, it'll be back to keeping my secret, back to living a lie again, afraid people will find out the truth. You must tell them. No, I can't. You must. He'll understand. He has... He has very tender feelings towards you. He could have left me when the truth came out about Frank Bernard. But he didn't. He stood by me. And now I have to do the same for him. Well, I firmly believe that you and Len have found the place to spend your remaining years together, and it's here. It's right here in Emmerdale. I think you're right. But Leonard doesn't. He can't bear walking into the shop, walking into the pub, running into people who turned against us. And if he wants to leave, then I'll go too. Anyway, let's talk about happier things. We'd like you to spend Christmas with us, and I'm going to ask Betty, so please say you'll come. Oh, I would be delighted. Our last Christmas here in the village. Let's make it a good one, eh? <laughs> Terry, have you got a minute? Well, I'm a bit busy, love. I'm uh, making a website for the B&B. &B. Oh, nice one. Well, it would be nice if I knew what I were doing. You should ask Danny. He's good at stuff like that. He did one for the antiques barn. Yeah? Well, maybe I will. Right now, I think I'll give up. What can I do you for, love? Could you talk to Bob? Him and Mum have totally fallen out and they won't listen to me. Well, that's just for even Bob for you. I mean, they fall out, they make up, they fall out, they make up. That's just what they do. Well, could you tell them it's about time they made up? Well, have a go. Can't promise you out, mate. Thanks. Why is it that me and you are like the mum and dad and Viv and Bob are just like these incredibly irritating kids who are driving me crazy? Have you got any easier questions? <sighs> I still haven't told them about us. OK, is there anything I can do at all to help? Or, or do you just want me to keep a low profile? Well, yeah, I did have an idea. Yeah? We get me, you, Scott, Dawn, Mum and Bob all together for our family dinner. Right. And an ambulance and some police by the door in case of bloodshed. Marlon! It's like what Terry said. It's just one of their arguments that's gone on longer than usual. OK, OK, we'll try it. If you think it'll work, we'll try it. And I'll cook, shall I? Oh, thank you. I know if we can just get them sat down and talking to each other, then they'll see sense. I know they will. It's a Christmas tree. Well, I can see that. Oh, 
I brought one last year. Why should this year be any different? I can think of several reasons. Do you want me to take it away again? No. Good. And uh, you can tell Leonard, if he's interested, the Christmas home brew shaping up very nicely. Right, Terry. Pint, is it, yeah? Yeah, please. Don had just had a word with me. Let me guess, you're supposed to tell me to make it up with a mum, yeah? Yeah, basically. But before we go there, um, there's something I've got to tell you. OK, look, if it's going to make me any more depressed than I currently am, I don't want to hear it, all right? Me and Louise. We're an item, finally. Terry, hey, that is brilliant! Really? Yeah, I made up for you. Well, you two, I mean, you're meant to be together, aren't you? <laughs> Congratulations, mate! Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, uh, seeing as you're in a better mood, um, how's about you and Viv? Well, at the time of speaking, there is no me and Viv. Well, you've fallen out a million times before. Well, I know, yeah, but they've just been temporary downturns on the roller coaster of life with Vivian, but this time it is different. Oh, look, It gives Paul. me no pleasure to say it. You know, you know, I have loved that woman like no other. Well, maybe it's just another one of your temporary downturns. <sighs> Terry, that, that reservoir of love that in the past has always been there in the background, hidden perhaps, but always there, this time has been mislaid. you find her again. I know you will. What's the matter with those two? Someone should remind them it's Christmas. You're remarkably chipper. For a man with a court date looming, a closed factory to fret about and a business partner in Jug. Ah, uh, well, the court date will exonerate me and the factory will reopen with a flourish. And as for Stephanie being in prison, well, uh, <laughs> those threes are enough to be cheerful. <laughs> Coffee to go, please. I'm glad you came in. I don't want to talk about Mum. Why not? Because she's an adult, and so is Bob. Therefore, they can sort it out themselves. Scott, you started all this, so me and you together, we're going to fix it. It's out of our hands, Donna. No, it isn't. You and Dawn are going to come over for dinner tonight. You're going to invite Mum, I'm going to invite Bob, and Marlon's cooking. Marlon? Don't start with me, Scott. I'm warning you. Look, look will you come? Please, we've at least got to try. You all right? Oh, good. We haven't paid. I think you'll find it's on the house. Come on, then. I want to hear all about this gigolo of yours. I'll paint you a picture. Imagine a candlelit courtyard outside a perfect little restaurant. This gorgeous bloke turns up, bronzed, buff, and with that look in his eye. Desperate. Hungry for love. Just hungry, I'm guessing. So you bought him dinner and in return he slept with you. Just what blokes do with lasses all the time, isn't it? As long as it was worth it. Oh, he was. Bob! Dinner at the cafe tonight. No. Look, if you don't want to do it for yourself or for Bob, then do it for Donna, will you? Because she's miserable. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that, but it can't be helped. Come on, I know you love Bob. And he seems to make you happy, so give it a go. Absolutely not. But it's, it's not just about you and Mum, is it? I hate this, Bob. Please, I hate you acting like this. I'm so sorry about that, Donna. You're what? both unhappy and you're bringing everybody else down with you. I can't even speak to Mum. Please, just give it a go, please. I don't see the point. I really don't. I'll take that as a yes, then. I suppose. All right, but don't get your hopes up, Donna. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> First two words, no, well, no, well. Excuse me. Edna, how can we help you? Oh, well, you could help your community. Huh? I have a petition here calling for Eric Pollard to be removed from his position on the council. What's he done? Excuse me, what's going on? He has been leading elderly ladies and young girls into crime. Have you? Making counterfeit handbags. Oh. That was down to Stephanie. She's not just a murderer, you know. She's not above petty scams. And you, of course, are whiter than white. I am as much a victim of Stephanie as anybody else. Oh, maybe not as much as Shelley. <laughs> You're a liar and a cheat. And I, for one, do not wish to be represented by you. I think I'll reserve judgment until I'm a bit more familiar with the criminal and his crimes. Whereas I, of course, know him only too well. But I will pass on signing. 
For now. Hmm. Shall we? Thank you. Look, I'm just asking for another week, that's all. My finances are slightly tied up at the moment. <laughs> Yes, well, I would like to untie them, but... Oh, come on, try and be a little reasonable, eh? Hello? Hello? You look like you could use a drink. <laughs> oh, why do we ever abolish capital punishment, eh? In the case of Stephanie, I'd gladly administer it myself. Eric! Why didn't you let me take the factory off your hands? I could use some more storage space. <laughs> it's not for sale. Pride is a fine thing, but it doesn't pay the rent. <laughs> As it happens, I'm going away for Christmas with some business friends, whereby I hope to conclude on a major deal over the turkey. In the new year, you shall see a significant expansion of the factory. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Good luck to you. Mm. Luck. Doesn't come into it. This is very nice, Donna. Thank you. Except you've laid one too many places. No, I haven't. I thought you were just doing the cooking. Um, yeah, uh, co cooking and then... and then eating. But this is a family problem. There's no place for him here. I agree. <laughs> Look, Donna, maybe... Stay put. Well, we've just cooked dinner. A bit of gratitude would be nice. Yes. This looks like a repast fit for a king. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. I beg your pardon? Nothing. It's just, why do you have to use words like that? Repast. If you don't mind, I don't need you giving me lessons in language, thank you. Pop. In case you didn't get it, the idea that you two are here is to make friends, OK? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So... Let's just try and be civilised, shall we? <sighs> what? Sorry, this is just the idea, you know. You asking me to be more civilised. Dad. <laughs> oh, well, this is going great, isn't it? Oh, all of a sudden, there's a problem with the way I speak. Please! Sorry, love. Sorry, Donna. Chicken looks lovely now, though. Hi, love. Hiya. Oh. Been out buying a tree? Not exactly. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean, not exactly? Well, someone brought it round. Oh, you've had it delivered? No. Um, Jarvis brought it. You are? Uh, and he said to mention his homemade brew. I, th I think it was a gesture. Take them baubles off. Look, I know he's hurt us, Leonard, but isn't it time we started to forgive him? There's some things you just don't forgive. That tree is going back. It was delicious, thanks, Marlon. Oh, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Perfectly nice chicken. Coco van! <laughs> Coco van. We could have had a takeaway. I still don't understand why we're airing our dirty linen in front of this dingle. But I'm glad he's here. I'm not asking you. I'm asking you. Why are you here? Oh, look, you see, this is what I'm talking about. The vacant look, glazed eyes, mouth open, the whole seven-foot-tall thing. I'm sorry, but that is in breeding. He's my boyfriend! No. Yes. Him! Me! <laughs> but he's a tingle. And he's far too old for you. And he cheated on Trisha with his own cousin. And he's probably still not over Trisha, and if he is, he shouldn't be. He's and... kind and gentle and funny. And he's clever and he's great with kids. And he's my boyfriend. And I feel the same about her. You could do so much better. Can I suggest that you stay out of this? Do what? Well, if you're looking for an unsuitable relationship, what about him and my daughter? Dad! Now you listen Mom, to me! Mum, just leave it, will you? He's all about the rapist thing again. I don't know how you persuaded me to come in the first place. Because you're better off without him. Stop it! No, you're right, you're right. I was referring to you beating up an innocent man, yes. Now, I was also referring to your sex with a schizophrenic lesbian. 
and a, and a whole range of arrogant, unpleasant, bordering on the criminal behaviour. You know, in my opinion, Marlon here is twice the man you'll ever be. Listen, Listen Bob, you know not... what you can do with your opinion. Right! If we've started on the kids, let's talk about Dawn, Dawn oh, shall we? let's not. She is not good enough for my Scott. Oh, you've always been blind when it comes to your son. She's on to a very good earner with him and she knows it! Right! I have had enough. No, no, come No, seriously. Donna, I'm sorry. If this could have worked out, great. But to tell you the truth, Dad, you are well short of air. I'm a tart! Diane. Not now. Possibly not ever. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you don't seem to be quite as chirpy as you were before. <laughs> You're not wrong there. This one's on the house. I don't like to see too many miserable faces in the pub. That's very decent of you. Not really. It's just bad for business. <laughs> Do you remember a few years ago now when you first came to this godforsaken little village? You and I almost got it together. Do you remember that? Eric, it's something I've tried to forget. I hope you're in a decent mood. No, I'm not. It's Terry about. Back room. I've just been caught in the crossfire between Viv and my dad, so I don't want a row. Oh, good. Neither do I. I'm taking TJ to Spain for Christmas. Are you? Is that all right? Are you sure that's what you want? Positive. Right, well, uh, I suppose it'll have to be all right, then. Yeah, Terry. No, no, I'm not having a go. If that's your decision, I'll just have to learn to live with it. Thanks. And, you know, you can have him loads before we go. Good. See you then. I'm impressed. I'm not exactly over the moon about it. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Do you know what? I still reckon I'm a lucky man. Isn't there anything I can say or do just to, to make you realise it's just a stupid argument you have every now and again? Donna. It's different this time. It's love. completely different. Well, that holiday was a complete waste of money then, wasn't it? <sighs> well, I, I wouldn't say that. Neither would I. Yeah. Really? I, I, think it's, I think it's helped us both come to a decision, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 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 Maybe it all started with your daughter grassing on my son. Your son getting my daughter to lie to the police? Yeah, well, it's all past that now, anyway. Yeah, I, I think Vivian and I are both in agreement that this whole sordid business, it, it just doesn't matter. Well, then, what, what are you arguing about? It, it isn't even really an argument. It... I don't like you anymore. Four years of your mean-minded, petty gossiping and sniping Viv, it's worn me down. Bob. And four years of you babbling on like some chimp who swallowed a dictionary and always taking sides with Diane and Louise. Well, I can't put up with it anymore. Mom. I'm oh, sorry, love. But just sometimes, relationships run out of steam. Two people fall out of love. Don't say that, Bob. Please. I'll get my things. Are you going to let us talk to you or not? then talk. I know I've made a fool of myself again. Well spotted. What's the big crime? So I had a good time with a bloke and I had to slip him a few quid to keep him around. So what? The big crime, Val, was not telling the truth about it. People don't like being lied to. Why do you think I did that? Because you wanted to look like something special. Or maybe because I didn't want to look like the only way I could get myself a bloke was by paying for it. 
OK, I don't really want to get into the tragedy of your love life. Let's just put it behind us, shall we? You look like you could do with the rest. Are you OK? I'm fine. And if I wasn't, it wouldn't be you I'd be telling. Hey, here. What, what, what are you doing? I don't want your apology. Well, it's not an apology, it's a Christmas tree. Yeah, well, you can keep it. Why? I brought one last year. Edna and Betty have already had theirs. We don't want it. Look, look, it, it, it's more than a tree. It's a, it's a gesture from a, from a neighbour who'd like to be your friend again. You know a friend of mine. And you're not going to be a neighbour much longer, either. I can't believe you're letting this happen. I can't believe you think he's your boyfriend. Still, life throws up some very nasty surprises sometimes. <laughs> Bob, where are you going to stay? I shall be fine. <laughs> I bid you good night. No, Mum, say something. Well, Mal, will you do something? I'm so sorry, love. 